This short video is designed to give you a better understanding of how to create a presentation using Microsoft's PowerPoint. It will cover the basics of planning, design, content, and delivery. It's not intended to be a tutorial on the entire program. I encourage you to take the time to learn all of what this terrific program has to offer. In the past, teachers or presenters who wanted to address an audience were limited to using slideshows. This involved having film-based slides created, then organizing them in a sequence and using a slide projector to show images as the presenter spoke. The original goal of a slideshow was to illustrate points the speaker was covering using graphics, including photographs, drawings, and illustrations. The speaker would talk about the points he or she wanted to make while relying on the slides to illustrate key areas. It gave the viewers something to look at while listening, and the presenter a chance to show graphically what they were trying to say. This basic slideshow has evolved into a digital version, the program called PowerPoint. This program has become the standard medium to convey information in a teaching or presenting capacity, but it has led us away from the original point of a slideshow, to illustrate one's points. Sadly, because most people don't understand how to use this powerful medium, its effectiveness is often reduced. As presenters or teachers, our goal is to convey information. As PowerPoint creators, we have a responsibility to our audience to use this tool correctly. By using some of these techniques and tips, you'll have a better working knowledge about how to create engaging, meaningful slideshows that effectively teach and share your information with your audience. PowerPoint can be used in two basic ways. The first is a standalone presentation, as you can see in this image. It's designed to have the audience read through it themselves without a narration. The second type of presentation is one that's given verbally. In this type, the slides are meant to be visual reminders or talking points, while the majority of the information is conveyed verbally. Now, in the case of a leave behind, it's okay to add a little more copy because you're not there to narrate, but in this type, keep it to a minimum. Now it's time to walk you through planning the way your presentation will look and feel. Before opening the actual program, I encourage you to sit down and think. Construct your PowerPoint presentation by thinking through how you want to present the material. This isn't a time to regurgitate something you got directly out of a book or wrote in a paper. This is a time to condense your thoughts into digestible little pieces. Just like when you're telling a story, you're going to want to have an introduction, make some key points with graphic supports, and have a conclusion. Before you actually start constructing your slides, try and do some planning. I like to draw out rectangles like this and make a storyboard of sorts to guide me through my process. After I've given some thought to what I want to say, I actually sketch it in. You can see this one says intro, a biography, where my diagrams are, and I have more or less a flow chart of how I want it to go. Once you have your plan in place, it's time to pick the overall design for your presentation. You're dealing with a powerful tool here. It's now time to think beyond white slides with black text and no graphics. Your design should not be a distraction to your message, but rather give the slideshow an overall professional feeling while being pleasing to the eye. What if you don't have much design know-how? Not to worry, Microsoft has your back. They have tons of pre-designed backgrounds for you to choose from called templates. You could even search based on what industry you work on. This is the general Microsoft template site. Here you'll see me searching for the templates that are based on industry. I've narrowed down my selection. I think this one looks really nice, so I'll click download and it will open up in the actual program and I can begin work. What if you don't find anything you like in the template gallery? Well, it's pretty simple to design a quick background or a border that appeals to you. You can simply switch the color, or in this case, I was doing a presentation about an educational topic, I wanted a chalkboard. I found a nice chalkboard image and just imported the picture as my background but I wanted to actually have a jazzy border that I'd have on every single page. So I found some photographs of children raising their hands and listening to presentations and gave them a nice black border. Here you can see I've imported the image. On this next progression you'll see I've imported three more and then put a nice little sort of transparent border over it. 
Lastly, you're going to want to give some thought to your fonts, both in terms of type, style, and size. Remember, choose a font that's easy to read. Cursive fonts like this one are pretty, but very hard to read. You'll also want to give some thought to contrast. As you can see, this yellow background with the white text is nearly impossible to read. Remember that high contrast is generally easier to read. Next, you're going to want to select some font choices. You're going to want to pick your color, your size, your general layout. Pick one that you use for headline and one you'll use for supporting copy like bullet points. And here's a helpful hint. Never ever do what this slide is showing where you have too many sizes, too many choices. It's jumbled and hard to read. Another thing to consider is that as you advance through the slides, you don't want your headline to jump around. Here it is close to the top and on this slide you'll see it shifts down. Nothing says unprofessional more than design errors like this. Alright, once you've got the overall look and feel of your slide done, you'll want to use this over and over again. But don't recreate it every single time. Instead, what you're going to do is use one of two ways to achieve this. You can use the design feature called Master Slide and create a master slide that will just be your background on every slide or make it easy on yourself. Go ahead and right click the one that you like and just paste it over and over and over again and you've got all your blank slides ready to go. Before we go on to content for the slides, I'd like to add one more caution. PowerPoint has some really neat animated features. You can make slides whip off the page, fade into the next, spin around and more. While these are cool, most people find them distracting. If you think these features would add to your presentation, use it. Just use it sparingly. You do not want to make your audience's head spin. Okay, let's move on to adding content to your slideshow. One of the biggest mistakes people make when trying to present their information in this format is simply adding too much information. A slideshow is meant to be a condensed, graphic-based way of conveying a point. A slide like this one is making several mistakes. The first is your contrast is not great enough, so it's hard to read. The second is too much information. It doesn't engage your audience. In fact, you're likely to get the opposite reaction. A bored audience isn't getting your message. They're falling asleep. And isn't that what you're trying to do, is convey information? Stay away from long paragraphs. This isn't an essay. Instead, limit yourself to no more than two to four points per slide. Refrain from actual written sentences. Your goal is to condense your point into a bullet point or two. Better yet, show it in a visual way. If this is a standalone slideshow, again, you can get away with a little more copy. You won't be there to narrate. However, copy should be at a bare minimum for verbal presentations. Most of the instructions should come from you verbally. Let's talk about adding graphics. You might be asking yourself, but how do I add graphics to illustrate my message? Well, first off, you might want to make use of the pre-designed smart art feature built into PowerPoint. This is an example of some of the choices that you have. They're pre-designed, they have cool shading, interesting ways of actually illustrating your point. You'll see Venn diagrams, arrows, showing relationships, and more. Think about how you might use these to represent what you're trying to say. Here's an example of one put to use. Not very well designed, but you can see it was very simple. Personally, I'm a graphic-based person, so I like to actually design it myself. In this case, I'm going to bring in some illustrations and photographs. How do I do that? It's pretty simple. Let's start with that blank slide. Since my presentation is about areas of the brain and how they work with intelligences, I thought, aha, I'll use a brain image. I went to google.com, I typed brain, and clicked show me the images. These are some of the results I got. Not quite what I was looking for. I decided to revise my search a bit and typed cartoon brain. When I found this young man with his head popped open, I thought this is perfect. But now I have to save it. Well, what I did was click the image. It came up larger. I right clicked and hit the selection for save as, saved it to my desktop, and then I could import it right into my presentation. Here you see the little boy imported ready to go. I couldn't just use the brain, I actually had to label the areas that I wanted. So using text boxes, I used all the phrases, and then I went up to my graphics and you can see that you can insert shapes. Well, I inserted 
a number of arrows and pointed them to the brain. So here's the basic information I've been presenting in this particular illustration. Here it is just with copy and here it is with graphics. You can see that the second option is a much better way of displaying the actual information and it's visually engaging. Okay, back to content. When it comes down to presenting it, if it's a slideshow you're presenting yourself, you're going to use these bullet points as talking points. What does that mean? Well, for starters, it means you do not read the bullet points verbatim, ever. Give your audience credit for knowing how to read. These points are meant to be anchors or reminders for what you're saying. You'll go deeper and further verbally than you have with a copy on the slide. The audience knows how to read bullets. They should primarily be listening to you. By giving your audience credit for knowing how to read a slide and instead narrating them through it verbally in an engaging manner, what you'll end up with is an engaged audience that's getting your message. At this point, I have to include some additional points about professionalism. You can have the most beautifully prepared slideshow in the world, filled with excellent points and super graphics, but your audience will discount your message if you do this one simple thing. Take a look at this slide and you'll see what I'm talking about. Spell check, spell check, spell check. Check your grammar. Check your punctuation. Remember that if you can't manage to spell words on a slide, your message is not going to be listened to. Okay, once you have the basic slideshow done, why don't you go back and see how you can jazz it up a little. Are there illustrations that would help? Can you add a photograph or something? Take for example this slide. Here's the basic information I want to convey about two types of intelligences. But I decided it'd be fun to add clip art that related to the two points, and I imported them in just like I'd done the little boy with the brain earlier. Another thing that would add visual interest is a quote. In this case, I made sure that I attributed who said it, and I put it in italics so you would know it was a quote. I could probably take it a bit further and put a photograph of who said it. Here's another interesting thing you can do. You can actually add a video. You can embed it right into your presentation so your audience can watch it right there with you without having to go to YouTube. It's not really simple to do, but if you follow the instructions, just about anybody can do it. Lastly, if you're giving a presentation that has a lot of links or background information or references, don't include the links while you're doing the presentation. You do not want someone to stop viewing your presentation to go check out a link and not get back to your presentation. So what you want to do is keep the flow going and at the end add those links. Okay, you finished content, design, you think you're done? Well, not quite. I'd like you to stop and walk away. That's right, go do something else for a while and give it time to breathe. If you don't take a break, your brain will auto-correct mistakes because it's been looking at the material for so long. You need to let it breathe. When you've given it a break, for some people it's a couple hours, I usually sleep on it overnight. When you've had a sufficient break, come back and edit it one more time. Take a close look, go all the way through for grammar, go all the way through for spelling, check your transitions, make sure that your content makes sense. Nine times out of ten, you'll find an error and be glad you gave it one more look. That brings us to the end of our video. You know the basics on how to think through your content, how to select your design, how to add visual interest. You've got all the building blocks of making a great presentation. Now go create.